Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Western Digital MyCloud. And on the surface, it looks like just like any other external hard drive from Western Digital. However, uh, it is a network attached storage device that also uh, kind of functions like a cloud service would, um, except it's at your house and it's not something that you have to pay a monthly service fee for. Um, it has a gigabit ethernet connection that you connect to your network. It needs to be wired. There's no wireless connection available. So you want to make sure you have a place to plug it in. Uh, and it also has a USB port, not for connecting your computer, but actually connecting external hard drives. I'm going to talk about some of the options you have with that in a minute. And of course, you have a power connector. So you can never uh, attach this directly to a computer. It is only network accessible. But uh, if you're on a decent uh, you know, switch that, or a router at, at a gigabit speed, it really, it's pretty quick. And I was pretty impressed with it. Uh, it supports uh, Windows and Mac right out of the box. So the second you plug the thing in, uh, you're going to see the hard drive show up on your local network. And I'll just zoom in here and just show you what that looks like. So basically, when you uh, connect the hard drive, the WB MyCloud will show up uh, to your Mac or Windows PC, and you'll have immediate access to uh, the public folder. And you know, the one thing that kind of irked me a little bit was that everything was just kind of open and you can connect to it right off the bat. And I think that's obviously designed to uh, get, get you going right away. But you'll want to spend some time in the configuration screen uh, to really lock it down. So I'm going to show you how that works. Now, one of the things that I really liked about this was that I didn't have to um, really look, search around on my network for it. In fact, I just had to type in wdmycloud.local and it just found it uh, on my local network, which was great. I've never seen something do this before. I'm probably uh, uh, you know, behind the times here on this, but it was really nice not to have to go dig through my router settings and try to find uh, exactly how to get this thing configured. And when you do uh, get into that address, uh, you'll have a really nice control panel. Let me add though, before I go further, is that they also have a configuration utility you can download. I didn't like that, mainly because it stayed resident in my max memory. In fact, I couldn't get rid of it without uninstalling it. And all that configuration utility did was basically provide shortcuts to this web page we're looking at. So don't install the configuration utility. There's another utility that you do want to install, which I'll show you when we get to the cloud access, but uh, we'll take it one step at a time. So when you log in, uh, you set up a password and a username, and then you have access to uh, the whole uh, device here. And initially, you're going to be uh, put with this little status update screen, how much uh, drive space we have free. It uh, does a little diagnosis of uh, what's going on inside the hard drive. And it's pretty nice. It gives you a, a you know, nice little idea of temperature and drive status and uh, the content that's mounted there. You have a firmware update there as well. Uh, content scan, basically what it does is it goes through the hard drive to look for files that it can serve uh, to smart devices like uh, your smart television or some other DLNA equipped device. And that actually works really well. Um, you have your shares here, and this is uh, the, the folders that you're putting online for people to share. And let me dig in there for a minute because um, you want to see how that works. You can create a share right off the control panel here, uh, and we'll call this uh, test2 um, testing. And one thing I don't like about creating a share here is that it's immediately uh, made public, but I'll show you how to do a little bit more of a granular uh, update in a second. Uh, users, you can add as many users as you'd like to it. So if you have kids and you don't want the kids accessing each other's files, you can lock them down from that. Uh, then you can also set cloud devices. And what cloud devices are, are iPhones and Android phones and uh, PCs and Macs that you're going to allow to uh, up, uh, access the drive uh, remotely. So even when you're out of the house, you can connect to this thing uh, with the cloud devices, provided they've been duly authorized to, uh, to do so. And we'll show you that in a minute, too. There is a lot to show with this product. So uh, we'll dig in here with the users first. So here's the only user I have at the moment, which is me. Uh, right now, all my folders on the device are uh, set to public. So I have access to everything. But if I had a non-public folder, it would give me the option uh, to uh, set it as uh, read and write, uh, read only, or no, no access at all. So you have some, some pretty simple com uh, controls over that. Uh, you have your shares here, and these are all the folders. And you can see here, this is the uh, test folder that we created just a minute ago. So you can uh, go in and work on that. If I turn public access to off, I then uh, will get the option to configure that folder for, for me. Uh, media serving, when you turn this on, this will allow it to be seen by uh, those smart media devices on your network. It also, by the way, has an iTunes uh, thing as well. So iTunes will see it as a share uh, additionally. So that works. It doesn't work with Apple TV, though. So I couldn't get uh, it to stream to my Apple television, but I could get it to uh, work with uh, iTunes on the Mac and Windows. So that's that part. Uh, cloud access is uh, pretty self-explanatory, but basically uh, these are all the devices that I've authorized to access via the cloud. So that is where that goes. And this is kind of neat. This is something called safe points. And um, you know, one of the problems that I've seen with people who put a lot of stuff on these external hard drives is that 
when these things crash, it is catastrophic because they lose everything. And a lot of times people think of these things as big data vaults. And you know, don't forget, there's only one hard drive in here. There's really no redundancy. But what you can do uh, is take an external hard drive, uh, plug it into the back of this thing here on the USB port, and it will become accessible as a backup device. So uh, what we could do is set up uh, this, this drive as a, way, as, a, as a backup for this thing and then set an interval, a safe point interval, in which this drive is imaged and backed up to the secondary hard drive. So if for some reason everything got wiped out, uh, we could plug our hard drive in with a new unit, presumably, and put everything back, whoops, back where we uh, found it. We almost had to use that right there. Um, so that is a really neat little feature. And uh, you can set it to go over local USB, but you can also uh, designate a drive in your network. So if you have a drive plugged into a computer or maybe another network attached storage device, uh, you can also uh, direct those backups there as well. So that is neat too. Now, one thing that also can be done when an external drive is plugged in is that you can also make it available to everything else on your network. So if we go back to our shares now, you'll see all of a sudden that video scratch, which is the name of this drive, is now available. And I had set uh, settings before, so I made sure it wasn't public, and I set it only for my user. And if I go uh, back to my Finder screen here, and we go back to our uh, my cloud device, because I think I am logged. No, I'm not. I'm going to need to log in real quick. So I'll log in as my username here. So initially what will happen is it will connect, and we'll see um, only a couple of uh, drives available. It does take a minute or two for it to kind of spin up. And of course, it's failing now because we're doing a live demo. But I'll just type in my username and password here. And when we do connect, we should be able to uh, see that video scratch folder. And what's really cool, we're waiting for this thing to uh, respond. And as my video switcher crashes as well, uh, what's neat is that um, you can plug in a drive with just about any file format. And that was really impressive to see because uh, I use a lot of drives that are formatted for Mac. And it works with the Mac HFS uh, journal. It works with Windows NTFS drives. It works with just about any drive format. So uh, I was really impressed with that. It doesn't have to be a hard drive either. You could plug in a memory stick or something like that. So uh, really neat little way to uh, get access to it. So, um, so that is how it works on your network. It pretty much functions like uh, a drive, network drive would on your Mac or Windows PC. And it's really uh, pretty flexible in that regard. Um, what it can also do is if you have a smart television, and I, I'll just cut away to a shot of my uh, Samsung TV upstairs, I was able to connect to the drive over the network and play a compatible video file over that as well. PlayStation 3 should work. Xbox 360 works with it. It is just compatible with any uh, UPnP or DLNA compatible uh, device that's looking for uh, that kind of uh, server. It will find it on this drive and be able to stream the media. However, you got to make sure that the device you're using to play back the video is compatible with the video file that you have on there. So um, for example, like if you have uh, you know, some DivX file or some really wacky format, it might not be compatible with the device you're trying to play it on. So uh, just keep that in mind because you might always run into uh, gotchas. The last thing I want to show you is how to access this thing over the cloud. And uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, the first is on the Mac or PC. Uh, you can use what's called the MyCloud software. And we'll just cut back to that real quick here. Um, the one thing that I found to be a little disconcerting is that they're telling you you're going to see an invalid security certificate. And it's like built into the software that you're going to see this warning before you connect. And I thought that was a little disconcerting. But I, I'm not putting anything really all that private or mission critical on this thing. Um, now, what will happen is, is when you're running the, the software on your local network, it's going to find uh, the MyCloud automatically. Now, I've already configured this. So uh, if I wasn't at home, I would still be able to connect this way. Uh, and then it connects to the drive. It gives you some, uh, some details about some stuff. And then you're in. And in fact, this is a, a text file that I uh, edited before. So if I double click on it, it will load up uh, the text editor on my Mac here. I can add another thing to it and hit save. And what it'll do is it'll sync that file back. Now, you can't access files uh, remotely the same way you would access them uh, at home. So for example, I'm using this software right now because this is the only way you can access files remotely while you're using this thing. It doesn't show up as a, as a drive like it would on your local network. But I found you know, it does sync up pretty reliably. It puts a local copy onto the hard drive. You can work on it. You save it, and then it uh, re-uploads it. So similar to Dropbox in that, uh, but you're not um, accessing it on your local file system. So you just have to remember to boot up the app uh, to go back in there. But if we uh, go back into that file, uh, you'll see that uh, testing four, which is the line we added, was saved and successfully synchronized with it. So, um, so that is pretty cool. And you, of course, you can add files to it as well. So um, we could uh, just, let's see here, we'll just go and drag a file, I guess, off of our 
our finder. So uh, oh, we've got a small file here. Let's see if we can drag it over there. And there it goes. It'll upload that little log file there. And now that's been stored on the hard drive and accessible to uh, anyone else who has access to it. So now what about a mobile device like an iPhone? Well, let's check that out. I've loaded up the app that you can find on the App Store. It's a free app, of course. Um, and you can connect there. And I've already pre-configured my drive, so we can go in there. Uh, and then, as you can see, we've got all of the, um, the folders available to my user, including that external hard drive, the video scratch, so we could get all the stuff off of there. Now, if we go in here, we can see now that that log file that we uploaded is there. I can even look at the text file that I edited before. Now, the one thing you can't do is edit the file and save it back, and that's a limitation with most cloud services. Um, but I could do an open with uh, and load it up in an app that was compatible with it and save it. However, I won't be able to um, load it back to this thing as easily. I guess what I could do is um, shoot it back with an open width over there. And it's just not, you know, it's not all that, uh, that smooth and consistent. But uh, you can, you know, if you really had to, uh, throw that file back and, and re-upload it. Now, one thing you can also do, though, and this I like a lot, is I could take uh, some photos and, and fire them back up to... Uh, to the cloud drive remotely. So if I had these four photos that I, I took, or five photos, and I was in this video here, and I really want to make sure that, I mean, I'll do this one here, uh, that I really don't want to lose these, I can just hit the uh, upload button at the bottom here. And what those will do is just re-upload to, uh, to my Western digital drive here, just uh, over, the, over the web. So it works a lot like you know, Dropbox or any of those other cloud services. And uh, you can get them safely off your phone. If you have a picture that you just don't want to lose, uh, you can get it back to your house uh, you know, anywhere you are in the world, provided you configure it correctly. So um, all in all, I think this is a pretty cool device. I'm, I'm impressed with it. It does a lot. Um, it is really easy to set up and get working, and uh, I was pretty, uh, pretty happy with it overall. I, I am a little concerned about that security warning. I think that it's a little sloppy just to tell users just ignore an SSL security certificate error. Um, so I think they need to bone up on that a little bit. Uh, the other thing was is that the product packaging said it was compatible with Dropbox and a few other cloud services, which it really isn't. Um, they do have the ability to connect to your Dropbox account with the app on the mobile devices. Uh, but really, it, the, the integration is downloading the app from Dropbox onto your iOS device and then firing it back <laughs> to the, uh, to the MyCloud. So it really wasn't all that useful. But I do like the external drive integration. I think that's great, especially if there's a backup process that works and is very simple to understand. Uh, so that's nice. The uh, speed of the gigabit Ethernet connection is, is great. Uh, and the integration with the DLNA media services is also really good, too. I would have liked to have had an option to stream to my uh, Apple TV with it, but you know, you can take, you know, you can take what you can get. But uh, overall, I think on balance, this is a really good network attached storage device. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.